Hatred of Babylon, Revelation 17, 15 through 18. Then he said to me, These waters which you saw upon which the prostitute sits are peoples and multitudes and nations and languages. Now as for the ten horns which you saw in the beast, these will come to hate the harlot Babylon, and will render her desolate and naked, and they will eat her flesh and will burn her up with fire. For God put it into their hearts to carry out his purpose, and to be of one accord, and to give their kingdoms to the beast, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. And the woman whom you saw is the great city, which has dominion over the kings of the earth. Revelation 17, 15 through 18. Verse 15. This verse demonstrates the worldwide scope of Babylon's power and influence, a major point in the jealousy she arouses, not least in the beast, whose ego cannot brook the elevation of anyone or anything to any degree of earthly glory that might compete with his own. The fact that without Babylon and her political, economic, military, and last but far from least cultural influence, he never would have achieved the mastery of the world he now enjoys, will matter little to Antichrist. As a true son of his father the devil, there is not a scintilla of gratitude to be found in the beast's heart of solid stone, a fact that should give pause to any and all who contemplate serving him or his master Satan, even from a strictly worldly way of evaluating matters. Verse 16 and 17. This is our first indication in Revelation of the precise manner in which Babylon will meet her demise. In all of the various Old Testament passages which speak of the destruction of Babylon, historical and eschatological, God is the cause, but in all such instances he makes use of earthly means. The seven European rulers together with the three rulers of the Southern Alliance's main power blocks will all be equally jealous of Babylon's status, power, influence and wealth, no doubt all the more so inasmuch as we have already seen that Babylon will, up to this point, have been largely spared from the worst effects of the tribulation, including much of the economic dislocation, as evidenced by the description of the prostitute's wealth earlier in this chapter. The ravages of war, since the conflicts will be fought far from her doorstep, and as the beast's home country and favoured realm from the worst of Antichrist's social, religious, economic and political system and reforms. The beast's own hatred is also unquestionably predicated upon Babylon's recent infidelity to him. For it will be recalled that during the just-concluded Fifth Bowl Judgment, Babylon had made use of the dislocation, occasioned by the darkness of the Seven Kingdoms, to conspire against him. The unfaithfulness demonstrated by the beast's sub-ruler in charge of Babylon at this time will have much to do with motivating her destruction. Rather than expressing disapproval in the face of the ruler of Babylon's intrigues with Israel during Antichrist's emergency expedition into the darkness of the rebellious north, there is no indication that either the powerful or the general population of Babylon were at all averse to exploring the possibility of alternative leadership. Given that Babylon has up till now been the privileged exception to all of the beast's depredations, it is no wonder that his attitude on returning will be one of hatred for Babylon, motivated by his own anger over such ingratitude and mixing with the hatred born of jealousy on the part of the ten kings. Although Antichrist and his ten rulers are the means used, this judgment itself originates directly from the hand of God and is completely in God's plan, for reasons that will be made clear later. But in verse 17 we are also given a good deal of information about the course and manner of this judgment. First, Babylon will be isolated from allies and support. The beast and the ten kings will render her desolate, then stripped of all of her defenses, made naked. Once Babylon is completely defenseless, they will eat her flesh and will burn her up with fire, a twofold process wherein Babylon will first be plundered, eat her flesh, and then made subject to devastating conflagration with all aspects of this horrendous judgment emanating from Antichrist and his subordinates, but originating with God, for God put it into their hearts to carry out his purpose. Verse 18. As discussed previously, while Babylon represents religious, cultural, and technological power, she is first and foremost a discrete geographical nation, a great city-state, Greek, polis, which has dominion over the kings of the earth. This dominion, rule, and influence which preceded Antichrist's rise to power 
came primarily as a result of her political, military, and economic power, and it is of these assets and defenses that she will be stripped before being plundered and destroyed. Babylon represents the jewel in Satan's crown. Aside from ancient Rome, no other nation in the history of the world has come close to matching such systematic and tangible power, political, military, and economic, wrapped up in such systematic and intangible influence, religious, cultural, and technological. But whether we focus upon Babylon as a nation projecting power or Babylon as a system projecting influence, we should not forget that in the end, Babylon is made up of people, and it is the collective depravity of her population on that future eschatological day which will call down this extreme divine judgment. Raise the standard on the walls of Babylon. Strengthen the guard, station the watchmen, prepare the reinforcements. But nevertheless what the Lord has planned, that he will do, namely what he has decreed against the inhabitants of Babylon. Jeremiah 51, 12 Fallen is Babylon, Revelation 18, 1 through 3 After these things I saw another angel coming down from heaven with great power, and the earth was lit up by his glory. And he cried out in a mighty voice, saying, Babylon the great has fallen, and she has become a dwelling place for demons, and a place of confinement for every sort of unclean spirit, and a place of confinement for every unclean and detestable bird. For the nations have drunk from the wine of God's wrath that flows from her prostitution, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth have grown rich with her from the economic power flowing from her wanton excess. Revelation 18, 1 through 3. Verse 1. Like the angel with the little scroll of Revelation chapter 10, this angel too is best seen as a type of Christ. For just as in the case of the angel of Revelation chapter 10, this angel too is seen coming down from heaven, a picture of the second advent. This angel too is said to possess great power and have a mighty voice. And in a manner analogous to the powerful angel of Revelation chapter 10, whose hair and face were like the sun, Revelation 10, 1, in the case of this angel, it is said that the earth was lit up by his glory, verse 1. Since the fall of Babylon is, in prophetical terms, intimately connected with the final events of the day of the Lord, comprising part of the final series of judgments which bring the great tribulation to an end and usher in the millennial kingdom of the Messiah, our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. The fact that this prophecy about the impending fall of Babylon should be given to another powerful angel, whose appearance likewise foreshadows the now imminent return of our Lord, serves to emphasize the immediacy of that return once Babylon has been destroyed, Armageddon and the Second Advent will follow in rapid-fire succession. Verse 2. As in the case of the angel in Revelation chapter 10, the proclamation given here, Babylon the Great has fallen, is prophetic, but only just so. The command to flee Babylon comes immediately upon the heels of this prediction, Revelation 18.4, with the actual destruction following with very little intervening time elapsed, the description of which begins in Revelation 18.5. The symbolic relegation of post-judgment Babylon to a habitation for demons, unclean spirits and unclean birds serves to underscore that this judgment is from God and that it represents cursing of the first order. Just as the original earth, a paradise of light and delight created perfectly and out of nothing from the hand of God in Genesis 1-1, was cursed with the devastating judgment of being made dark in utter waste and desolation, becoming ruined and despoiled by the time of the situation described in Genesis 1-2, as a result of God's judgment upon Satan's rebellion, and just as Sodom and Gomorrah were totally annihilated with fire and brimstone and remain a curse to this day. So Babylon's judgment will be cataclysmic, with her end serving as a memorial to the folly of serving Satan in place of the one true God.